Hack for Fun and Profit, Episode 7 Pen Testing a Google Web Toolkit Application. Hello, ethical hackers and bug bounty hunters. I've recently conducted a successful penetration testing against a web application built using GWT, and I want to share with you the process I followed. Hopefully, this episode will inspire you during your own bug bounty hunting or penetration testing journey because it's not just for GWT applications. It's the process of thinking and overcoming the hurdles during your assignment. I will briefly explain what GWT is and what research has already been made. Then, I will explain my process of building a verb extension to help me during the penetration testing process. Finally, I will share with you some vulnerabilities I found, especially a special one, which required further effort. So stay with me as we smash this application into pieces. A brief introduction of Google Web Toolkit. Throughout my career, I have encountered GWT applications two time only. It's a relatively old technology, but it's still used by some companies. According to the official GWT website, Google Web Toolkit is a development toolkit for building and optimizing complex browser-based applications. Its goal is to enable productive development of high-performance web applications without the developer having to be an expert in browser quirks. Well, in other words, GWT allows developers to write web applications in Java without having to worry about client-side technologies. In fact, GWT cross-compiles Java code into JavaScript ready to be used cross-browsers. How GWT requests look like? It's easy to tell when you are in front of a GWT application. Typically, you will mostly see POST requests in your web proxy with a series of strings separated with pipes. It seems intimidating at first, but when you understand how the POST data is structured, it's fairly easy to spot what it does with a bit of practice. I've included all the screenshots and URLs in the blog post linked in the description, so make sure you visit it to see all the details I'm referring to here. Understanding the GWT post data. I've built my knowledge upon an awesome article which explains the previous work that has been done, the GWT post data structure, and how you can enumerate the endpoints in such a technology. Although it doesn't completely apply to recent versions of GWT, I still recommend you take some time to read it. However, if you still don't want to manually analyze the requests, it's possible to parse the GWT requests and pinpoint exactly where the user input is located thanks to a GWT parser script available on GitHub. This tool takes the GWT post data as input and returns the areas that we can tinker with marked with the same highlight that Verb Suite uses in the Intruder tool. But even with this tool available, it's still impractical for me to manually copy the GWT post data from Verb Suite and run the parser for each and every request. It would be great if Burp Suit automatically highlighted the user input whenever it encounters a GWT request. Writing my own Burp extension. I have always wanted to write a Burp Suit extension, and this was the best opportunity for me to do that. In fact, I didn't find any publicly available extension that would successfully parse GWT requests for me. For example, there is a, an extension called GWT Insertion Points, which doesn't seem to work, at least for my case, probably because it hasn't been updated for three years. Moreover, ZapProxy supports scanning GWT requests, but it's currently impossible to highlight the user input during a manual security testing. The birth of GWTAB
With the tight penetration testing schedule I had, I planned for one day to write the extension. Therefore, I had to keep it simple. The goal was to show a new tab in Burp containing the user input for every GWT request. That way, I can significantly increase my efficiency by focusing only on the marked strings without having to manually run the parsing command. Hence, GWTab was born. Writing GWTab involved three main pieces. The first one is to show a new tab in Burp, and for that I used the custom editor tab template provided by Burpsuit, which is available online. It gave me a quick start and let me focus on only the GWT feature I wanted to develop. Second, I had to parse the GWT post data, and for that I used the parser I mentioned earlier. As I said, it can highlight the user input with the burp intruders marker, which is useful if I want to perform some automated fuzzing using intruder, or even active scanning based on the highlighted inputs. And finally, I had to do some extensive reading of some parts of the Burp Extender API in order to properly understand the signature of the functions, the interfaces to use and what to implement. And after a lot of trial and error, I finally got it working. In the blog post, you will see the screenshot which shows the new GWT tab containing the user input that I can focus on. Limitations of GWTab Some requests containing long values seem to make the GWT parser crash. Therefore, GWTab will sometimes show you the message parser failed whenever that happens. Unfortunately, I couldn't invest more time to fix this issue on the parser side. Now that I can spot user input in most GWT requests on the fly, I was ready to start hunting for those juicy bugs. Low hanging fruits. I found many low hanging vulnerabilities during this assessment because developers simply didn't bother implementing any sort of proper access control. Because the GWT post data seems to be complex and intimidating, Developers assume hackers won't be able to understand and exploit it. Well, I guess they ignore the very definition of a hacker. If you're a developer listening to this episode, just know that curiosity and challenge are key drivers for a hacker. Besides, be aware that security through obscurity is a fundamentally false protection. It has only pushed hackers to dig even deeper. This application was no different. In fact, Broken access control vulnerabilities were everywhere. Insecure direct object reference everywhere. Because of the false assumption I mentioned earlier, almost all endpoints were vulnerable to IDOR vulnerabilities. If you don't know what it is, make sure to go to the blog on thehackerish.com, the link is mentioned in the description. To make things even worse, most requests used increasing numerical identifiers. Besides, it was easy to spot such IDs without even using GWTab since there was only one identifier per request. All I needed was a trained eye, which came naturally with practice. These vulnerable endpoints allowed me to access edit and even delete resources of other unauthorized accounts. However, I want to share details about one bug which required more effort to fully exploit. I chose this one because I want to demonstrate why impact is so critical and what techniques you can use to increase it. Beyond Trivial IDOR Vulnerabilities Before diving into the vulnerability, I want to explain to you what the application is all about so that you understand the impact. The application is a service exchange platform which allows its clients to offer and consume services. Therefore, if an attacker can delete arbitrary offers, it means that the purpose of the application is simply compromised. Well, guess what? 
I found just how to achieve that. Detecting the vulnerability. Detecting the vulnerability was easy. In fact, I followed the same approach I mentioned in the video tutorial about broken access control. I'll make sure to mention it in the description box. In a nutshell, I used two separate accounts. Using the first account, I created an offer and triggered the request to delete it. Before deleting it though, I captured the request using burp suit and sent it to the repeater. Then I dropped the request to preserve the offer. From there, I took the JSON web token of the attacking user and inserted it into the vulnerable request. When I sent it to the server, the victim's offer got deleted. Proving impact. Looking at the post data revealed a huge payload containing multiple objects, IDs, and string values. As a bug bounty hunter or a penetration tester, you would quickly report this bug, right? Well, the impact is still not clear. In fact, I had no idea how an attacker can realistically build such post data. If you have listened to the episode about writing a good report, you know that impact plays a huge role in the bug bounty game. To prove the impact, I had to dig deeper into the application. Exploiting the vulnerability. I first assumed that the server might delete the offer whose ID is present in the request. Therefore, I tried injecting the victim's offer in all the potential inputs present in the post data. I had to do it by hand since the GW tab extension failed at parsing the post data. However, after many tries, it became obvious that this was not the right approach because nothing was deleted. I didn't want to give up so quickly. I knew that the application allowed users to reach offers of other users. What if I could grab the entire offer object from the results? Well, unfortunately, this idea failed since both objects didn't fully match. It was clear that I needed two requirements if I wanted to properly and successfully exploit this, this vulnerability. First, I needed a request which uses the same offer object structure. And second, this dream request should be accessible to the attacker. Based on these two requirements, I started looking through the application features and all the actions a user can perform on offers published by other users. After some time, I found that the user can like and unlike an offer. And lucky for me, the unlike operation used the exact same offer object that the one used in the offer deletion request. I couldn't believe my eyes. I was really lucky. And from there, the attack scenario became clear. First, an attacker browses the offers list, which is public. He or she likes the victim's offer, then unlikes it. Then he or she captures the offer object and injects it into the vulnerable request. And finally, the victim's offer gets deleted from the database. Now that the impact is clear, you can finally and safely report that bug without worrying about rejection. Besides, you might even reduce the probability of getting duplicated since your vulnerability required more effort to exploit and not all bug bounty hunters are willing to take the extra steps. Moreover, even if the team accepts your so not convincing impact report, the reward of a clear impact will certainly be much higher. In the offensive security industry, whether you are a full-time penetration tester or a seasoned bug bounty hunter, curiosity and challenge are the fuel which will push your limits. In my case, I always wanted to write a burp extension to solve a problem, and this application presented the right opportunity for me to challenge myself. Besides, I always seek ways to achieve the highest impact, not only to get higher bounties, but to give a better return on investment to my clients as well. Later, I found that the developers were already aware of this issue. However, 
Because of the complexity of the post data, they assumed that nobody would figure out how to successfully exploit the vulnerability and delete the authors. Thanks to this full exploit, they have learned that they should never rely on obscurity the hard way. I hope you found this content useful. If you did, then support me by commenting, sharing, and subscribing. Until next time, stay curious, keep learning, and go find some bugs.